Hey, Svetlana. Hello, Arne. It's nice to see you. And um, for you at home, guys, uh, we didn't plan this, but we're in partner look. Did you did you notice that we all we're both wearing kind of a pinkish yes, uh, flavor are. here, all the, and that's mixed with the red, so it's a very nice tone here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing very very nicely. We just moved into this uh, new studio here. Um, mm -hmm. This is the very beginning, so it will look uh, much better at one point. But uh, I thought we will just give it a shot and try it out with the newest settings right here. You have been traveling a lot recently. Are you glad that you're finally home, or could you have done a couple of more weeks? Uh, I'm I'm really glad to be home. To be honest, I yeah I really missed my family, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, but yeah, I think I could have done a few more weeks. <laughs> which uh, is there any country which you haven't traveled yet, which you want to travel no matter what happens? Something like I don't know Australia, Asia, or somewhere in Europe. I honestly want to go everywhere, like every. <laughs> That's I, a I wouldn't. Humble I wouldn't goal. say no to anything. Wouldn't say no to anything. But um, maybe the one place that I really want to go is Spain. Hmm. That's that's somewhere I haven't been yet, but it's a country that I really like. Yeah, I would love I would love to go there and uh, um, learn a bit more Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, you just uh, recently had the chance in the Dominican Republic to to learn a bit more Spanish. So mm -hmm. you're 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 brushing up. Um, I think it's like six or seven or eight la languages. I just lost track of how many languages you can mm -hmm. speak right now. But um, I hope you didn't lose track of your chess skills. Do you have Hopefully something? Not. Do you have something nice to offer for us today from from your smart moves? And if so, show us show it to us now, please. Um, yeah. So I thought we could have a lesson on swindling today. Ah, Are you familiar with ah, that term? Never ever heard of that before. <laughs> I, I am I am the master of swindling, so this is going to be a piece of cake for me. Just yeah, saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the official basically definition of it for those who don't know, it's um, it's basically a, a a bit of a trap um, with which a player in a losing position uh, tricks their opponent and achieves a winning or a drawn. Uh, position instead of the expected loss so it uh, it it could be called the trap uh, uh, essentially it's something you don't hear about too often in chess literature I find uh, because it's not the most uh, methodical or strategic concept in the world uh, but uh, I think it plays a very important role from a practical standpoint in in your actual games and it seems to me that I have this uh, aura of uh, swindling because, yeah, from the first move on, I'm kind of swindling because I normally give a pawn away. And even mm -hmm. Dr. Carsten Müller gave me a book called uh, How to Swindle or uh, uh, the, the Perfection of Swindling by David Smearden, Australian mm -hmm. uh, GM. So, yeah, it seems to be that people just look at me and think like that's a swindler. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Actually, I, it's I very don't, nice, yeah. uh, uh, there aren't that many books about swindling on its own, I find. So that's, it's very nice that you mentioned that. There's um, also one more book, uh, which is kind of the classic uh, swindling book. It's uh, Marshall's Chess Swindles. It's oh, written by okay. Frank Marshall in 1914 or a very long time ago. And, uh, Frank Marshall was basically the ultimate swindler, even before the whole online era, before everything, because he was one of the few strong players who was actually proud of his reputation as a swindler. <laughs> and so he became famous for it. Okay, so, didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I wonder if he would be a good uh, bullet chess player in, in these days, if he would still uh, be yeah, there. Yeah, I bet he would be. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, remember the saying that the hardest thing to do is to win one game? Luckily for us, uh, we are on the opposite side of that today. So we will be looking at completely lost positions. Isn't that great? I love it. Let's go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, the first. Uh, this is the first example, and um, basically, this is a game between uh, between Evans and Rashevsky. This is uh, more of a. A historic swindle example it's oh. a rather quick tactic but it unfolded very nicely and uh, I think it's 
it's quite a classic uh, classic example of a swindle. And I still um, this was don't like, know it, huh? sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, it was played in the 1963 US Championships. So it's a very, this game was very important for the standing, standings of the tournament because uh, these were some of the uh, most serious contestants for the prizes. Uh, not for the first place, though, because this was the time when Fisher's long-lasting supremacy, where he was just crushing everyone. Um, and he won this, this tournament with, like, 11 out of 11. So th this was still important for the second, uh, third, uh, et cetera, places. So, um, yeah, it swindles very often happen in those high-pressure situations where, um, yeah, where both players are really nervous. And uh, this is one of those uh, positions... The game was relatively leveled at first. It was a bit better for Evans in the middle game. And then Grzeszewski, who's playing black, started to outplay him for the next half of the game. And we arrive at this position where black is just simply up a knight in a completely winning position. And um, yeah, so white was right in trying to make an effort to bring, uh, to bring the queen and the rook somewhere closer to the king and to create... Uh, uh, some problems, but even this should not be enough to hold because White's king is in a lot of danger as well. So basically, uh, Evans plays h4. This is an important move. I, I'm not sure if you see the idea behind it just yet, but uh, maybe it's not yet, it's coming no. to um, it's coming to a critical point soon. So um, in in this position. Ryshevsky took on g3, which looks like the most logical move that you can possibly make here. Totally. Um, so can you try to guess what white played now? Is there any way to save here from this seemingly hopeless position? <laughs> okay, for you at home, of course, the same applies. Maybe you have found it out already. So now I just have to think, of course, why did even h4 happen? Probably to get the queen away from there. Yeah, so it very likely is a check on f5 with the queen, I assume. Yeah, okay. that, that looks quite nice. It's also kind of the only check I can see which would make sense to me to not get checkmated um, myself. So if I give a check on f5, of course the pawn cannot move, but the queen could move back to g6. Also the knight could go to g6. Now, if the knight goes to g6, I think I can take on h5. The king goes to g8. And then, what what happens then? Then my rook is hanging. That's not helpful at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And if the queen goes to g6, I actually see even less. So maybe queen to f5 is not the right move after all. You came to the right conclusion. Hmm. It's not queen f5. Okay, now what else do we have? Oh, okay, okay. So, you see it now? I no, but I I have to think of a completely different uh, perspective. Um, mm -hmm. I I was thinking of how can white win this, but I believe oh, no. <laughs> I no. believe this is a stalemate, and yes, this is right. the reason why H four has been moved. So the mm -hmm. only last piece which can move cannot be moved anymore. So actually, I think it is probably queen h8 check. Right. So it's either queen g8 or queen h8 yeah. check. It doesn't exactly matter. But you sacrifice the queen on g8, for example, and then you just keep checking yes. with the rook forever. Yes. So yes. wherever the king goes, uh, you're just gonna, going to check it forever and yeah can the king no the king cannot get out even if you yeah. check it like that okay okay cool. not because it's nice. all covered by the fonts <laughs> oh so, that is nasty love it yeah <laughs> yeah i I, th I thought it was uh, it was a nice example it's it's rare that you that you see that uh, happen in an actual game not in some you know made-up tactic um uh, but yeah so this, there's an amazing stalemate with just a 
uh, a board full of pieces, uh, mm -hmm. which I thought was nice. So yeah, you may think that it's um, maybe it's important to give a, a difference between a swindle and a blunder because this might seem like well, Ryshevsky just blundered. That's uh, that's what you would call it. Um, but uh, I think the difference is at the core. It's not it's not that obvious. There is mm. there's basically no difference, but. Um, a swindle is more of an unexpected and hidden and more artistic and uh, it's usually pre-planned by the player so Evans actually planned the stalemate to happen it wasn't uh, just uh, a position where uh, uh, where he could have where he could have played uh, like a not like an obvious move Queen to and G6 one? is the only thing which Queen G6 comes is the is the win, yes. Queen G6 and then Queen E6. Nice way to save oh, the knight. Okay. Because if white ever captures, then you capture back That's with the knight. And nice. this is um yeah, so this would this was the way to win. Um not that difficult, right? But uh, but also the obvious move, queen g, queen g three, unexpectedly, turns out to be bad. So yeah, um, it's not just a one sided blunder, really, but rather it was a thorough trap which the player in a difficult situation has set up for the opponent. So that's kind of how um, what swindles are. Uh, do do so you know? Uh, and you you never know the backstory of the whole game, of course. Or do you know? I mean, there is a chance that there is. Little time left for black, maybe. Likely, likely. Or something yes. like that. So it's difficult, I think. Move 49, maybe they just had time Ooh. added. Could we be, never know. Yeah. But usually, usually, yes. All the most amazing moments happen before move 40. Yeah, but it is, yeah, <laughs> that's true. But it is very difficult to see. Um, I, 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 I probably, as black, I would have fallen for that. I think I've never ever had a game with a situation similar to this yet, where somebody could get a stalemate against me. I think I've never. Did I ever have a stalemate before? I don't think so. You have online, but you just don't remember. Online those. for sure, yes. No, but yeah. in a, in a real overboard game, I think I never had a stalemate before. Not not hundred. I wouldn't wouldn't uh, rely on mm -hmm. it, but yeah, I think I think mm -hmm. I only played a couple of hundred over the board games anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in in the future. Did it ever? Might, but... Did it Did it ever happen to you, stalemate? Um, I don't think it, uh, I, I know I had opportunities, maybe I'll, I could actually show that game in one of the future um, oh, yeah. lessons, oh, yeah. because I do have one, one nice game where I could have saved myself through a stalemate, but I, but I didn't see it, but it's usually in end games, not in, um, not, not in the positions where it's just full of pieces, Sure. but not, not complete end games, of course, not like uh, just one piece, uh, but yeah, some Brook end games, some Queen end games. Yeah, I, I did have, definitely did have opportunities, but I don't have uh, a recollection of one that was like really beautiful like that, but I am sure. going to show after this example, I am going to show one of my swindle Oh, examples. nice. Okay. Yeah. Looking forward to this. So what do yeah. we have here now? It's this white smooth is, again. Uh, this one, yeah, it's a game between, um, well, where I'm not going to make you solve it just yet. So this is just uh, uh, how how it unfolded. Um, this is a game between Feruja and Maksudlu, which are two Iranian uh, uh, prodigies. Or ex-Iranian, for at least well, one. Yes, <laughs> yes sorry. <laughs> right. Um, and this is from the Iranian Championship 2018. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one of them won the event that year because they actually alternated a few times and they each won it two or three times. Mm -hmm. But this was likely a very important game for both of them between the two favorites. Um, and sure. uh, it was a nice swindle from actually... Um, Barham's side, so maybe we should look at it as black. Okay, Let's cool. look at it as black. Um, so basically, I just wanted to show how the game actually got to uh, where it went. So Feruja here makes a really nice sacrifice, knight g7, which uh, there is no mate in sight just yet, but um, it was uh, it, it is a very nice move because if you notice all of Black's pieces are pretty much tied to their 
original squares, right? The queen can't move. The rooks are cannot really come to the to the other side of the board to help. Uh, the, the bishop uh, also has a hard time coming back because that blocks the escape. And uh, I I think it was it, it was a very good sacrifice. There is no immediate win for him, I don't mm. think. So the computer would uh, probably defend this more efficiently. But uh, uh, from a human standpoint, it is uh, it is really difficult to defend. So he continued uh, with queen g7. Oh, that's a great move. I th right. Yeah, yeah, that is that is good to give an escape for the Yeah, king. creates a lot of threats. So um, as uh, black, what you should be trying to do in those positions. So this is not uh, straight up lost just yet, although we will get to that point. But uh, it's very difficult to defend, right? So when you have a situation like that, you have to um, somehow create some counterplay of your own. Mm -hmm. So this is what... Um, Maxudlu is doing by bringing the rooks onto the A file and playing A5 next and opening up the queen side mm -hmm. as uh, some of his only chance to um, to start uh, to start creating some threats. So yeah, maybe we could get to maybe we could stop at this position. What do you think uh, White's idea is with Bishop F1, and how do you think uh, you could prevent it? So. Uh, the idea is to go to h3. Mm -hmm. and, and, what, and why would the bishop go to h3? To get the diagonal and let this poor black king not be able to escape to d7. Right, right. so that was why uh, black's plan mm -hmm. was to hopefully escape like that. Um, but yeah, so this is why Ferruja is bringing his bishop to h3 to not let that happen. So how should uh, how should black play in this case how to prevent that is there so what i can see is so the knight on c4 has to move to such an amazing spot that white has no other chance to exchange the bishop on b5 maybe but where would that spot be? Or is it even like that? So let's just go to d2. Knight goes to h3. The knight gives a check on f3. And the king just moves aside. And then the knight could... Well, no. you are right about knight d2, except uh, you don't actually take that rook on e1 after. Knight d2 is right. Oh, okay. So, but what, but what happens after? Yes, exactly. Bishop h3. Knight. Uh, this knight takes on e4. Is oh. What okay. 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 And oh. Yeah, it's, it's actually yeah. It's it's actually unbelievable. But it is. none of the checks are good because um, then the king can go to c8, and now well, the knight can give a discovered attack um, a discovered check but then the queen is going to be hanging at the end of it anyway so the knight can't really you know take uh, take something here or win a piece that is the queen insane <laughs> that is so scary my gosh yeah but well uh, as black you don't really have a choice here so you just have to close yeah. your eyes and hope it's fine yes true um, yeah, so instead, so now now bishop h3 is actually not working because of that knight uh, taking on e4. Mm -hmm. So instead he played bishop g2. So he will go for that plan a bit later. Okay. He plays a5, right? So he's trying to create counterplay on, on the queen side. And rook a to d1. So basically, white is now winning. According to the computer, this is uh, this is a winning position, and oh. just visually, I think he would also rather play white because white has a really strong attack, better peace coordination. Um, so the question is, what is the right way for black to play in a situation like this, where I don't know, you're about to get checkmated, uh, seems like everything is not going well. Uh, what do you think? Um, how would you play? You have to go completely bonkers now. Yeah, that's that's how, what I would think. 
which I like. Mm -hmm. So this is why <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that. So what could be one of the most bonkers moves here? It's, it's not that crazy. It's but, not that crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that won't work. What else? I guess you would... Uh, no, that's also not working. Is that working? No, that's not working. Oh, boy. Yeah, what what to do in a situation? So how can get black out of this? Do, and I do not think it is to try to defend this position. That's not... It's just not helping. Well, we have established that already. Yes. So that this is never the right swindling strategy. Probably not. No. <laughs> Defense is never the answer. So what would no? This is oh boy, this is tough. Have you at home found the solution yet? Because I haven't yet found it. Poof. Hmm. That's a tough one. Can I think for uh, a couple of more seconds? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Um, so, okay. What would actually happen if you go to A4 and then A3? That's probably too slow. It cannot work. Yeah, it's a, it's too slow because the rook can just always come to a one or a oh, blast. Yeah. Okay. Um, if the knight goes to e four, takes takes. Or actually, remember White still has that bishop h three idea, and then yes, some later checkmate is coming. So as once, uh, yeah, if you don't create anything right away, then that's what's coming up next. I'm just like. Should I maybe just, um, maybe I should just leave? No, this cannot be. Oh, I, 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 you have to give me a hint, please. I, I think I cannot uh, get it. Unfortunately, okay, well, the don't... Swindle King is losing it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to save the knight. I don't have to save the knight. Unfortunately, no. that's how far I was already to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, um... It's on the, yeah, it's about counterplay on the queen side. Yes, on the queen side. Yeah. So if you take b4, the knight takes, then the rook to a1, that doesn't help either. Oh, oh, b takes, a takes b, rook takes knight, and then b takes c. Does that's already closer. That looks a bit more intimidating, maybe. That's already closer. It's closer, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you do need to open up to open up the queen side like that, because if you try saving the knight, you basically haven't really achieved much in the last few moves, and uh, white now has free reign to do whatever, to do the bishop h3 idea, yeah. to, um, and later to give checks. So this uh, already uh, this already would not would not be working and just in general terms that's uh, not really how you would play in a position like that if you um yeah we've already talked about uh, basically the right way to the right windling uh, swindling strategy it's um it's basically to complicate the position as much as you can mm -hmm. um yeah so, so to put it simply when you are better you need to simplify and when you're worse you need to complicate the game so it goes it's a rule that can go both ways so here if you make the right evaluation which is a black is in a lot of trouble and uh, if he does nothing then uh, he will be losing in the next few moves because of his king safety um then you would know that uh you have to do something like that. You have to make a sacrifice. You need to do something to gain a bit of time for your own counterplay. So yes, it is uh, A takes B4. Once again, sometimes these may not be objectively, you know, the top moves. Maybe it's like the second best or third best, but it needs to be something that's, uh, that complicates the game and makes it harder for the opponent to play. So it is not always about 
the computer evaluation because in most of these cases you're just dead lost anyway gotcha yeah absolutely this is an important lesson actually that uh, the computer gives an evaluation and then you think because you're analyzing your game you think like oh you're doing it wrong but after mm -hmm. all we're playing humans and that is something to consider and this is difficult so yeah so mm -hmm. it's it's a good lesson yeah. actually here yeah okay so, uh, the game continues with rook a1 so even though um black did give back the piece that uh that Ferusa sacrificed earlier now at least there are problems at least the rook came to uh to a1 there's a passed pawn now on b3 and it is uh still might still be lost but uh it is not that simple anymore once the pawn uh, once the pawn is already that that far in. And actually, uh, Feruja did make a few inaccuracies. And uh, at some point, it became harder to to defend already, uh, to, well, to attack for him. Yeah. But now, now we're not sure who's defending, you see, because after these few um, active moves, uh, Black has uh, counterplay oh. as well. So b2, queen h8, and uh, suddenly, um, White's only uh, White's best thing to do already was to go back to to e3 and to basically trade queens. So this was, by the way, a discovered check. So this is why the king moved away, um, and to trade queens and uh, go for an end game like that. So this was already best um, to kill all of uh, Black's counterplay. <laughs> and then there's more happening for for Black. So yeah. Yeah, but that's the hard thing is when you know that you had a winning attack or you knew you had a winning position to switch gears and to go back to playing normal chess because you keep looking for that win, which might not even exist anymore. Yes. So this is why he doesn't trade queens. And now he's actually the one who uh, can lose this game uh, because uh, the attack is no longer working. So this looks very scary. Knight uh, 97 attacking the queen, <coughs> Indeed, yeah. but rook a1 oh, is is coming up, and uh, I actually wanted you to guess which move do you think black played here, because it is not rook b1. What? <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. It's bishop to f3, right? It is bishop to f3. I think that's a, that's a really nice end. That's uh, beautiful. Um, rook b1 still wins. <coughs> Sorry. It still it still wins rook b1 um, bishop f1 and then rook c1 and then oh. uh, later there's a there's a rook c3 threat yeah basically every every threat you can imagine it's it's uh, it's here and then the queen promotes or something like that so it still wins but it's not i think it, it's not as nice as the bishop f3 <coughs> final, final Indeed, winning yeah. move so yeah, this example was not as um, clear cut because Ferruja was only pushing for a win. It wasn't like a, he was a rock up or something and then messed up. It was, um, uh, he was still winning. Uh, according to the computer, he was winning at many points. Uh, but um, it's uh, it wasn't uh, that much of a hopeless position with zero play. But it was only not a hopeless position because uh, Maksudlu, the player with black, I didn't play passively, and he did try to find counterplay. So it, uh, so he did create at least some play in his position, which could have otherwise, if he made a few slow moves, it would have been hopeless. So the essential rule when you're under attack is, uh, or like this, or just in a worse position in general, is to try to create as many problems as possible for the opponent, and uh, and yeah, not be afraid to give back some material, and uh, yeah, so have some counterplay of your own. And uh, this was an example of where white w looked like it was a winning it was a winning attack, but suddenly um, it was turned around in a few moves and uh, and changed from completely winning to a lost position. Yeah. So this was the, basically the this example. Let me go to the next one then. Um, okay, we still have a couple of minutes time. That's uh -huh. good. Let's go for it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put this from the white side. So um, I wanted um, 
to show one of my recent and probably one of my favorite swindles. Um, <laughs> this was, um, yeah, it's um, it's not that it's some sort of uh, masterpiece, but uh, uh, but it was just one that felt good because it was uh, it was out of a completely hopeless position. So this was a few months ago at an I am event in my hometown in in Ukraine. And I was playing a grandmaster, Alexei Kislinski. I was playing white. Um, and uh, I got this horrific position out of the opening uh, because after a lot of tactics, I ended up down in exchange. Uh, so yeah, this is the position that we had. It just looks absolutely horrendous. And um, <laughs> oh, I, come this on, is, it's, it's, no, it's this not is a so game good, with, yeah, but. <laughs> I'm down an exchange with basically zero counterplay. So that's the whole problem is that there is there is barely any counterplay here because all the pieces are just tied and there's um, there is nothing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a seemingly harmless move, whatever, King H1. The opponent probably thought you might as well resign and play a move like King <laughs> H1. <laughs> but um, It was there uh, for yeah. a reason, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. I was actually preparing a certain idea. I had... I had almost no hope that it was going to work because it was the only thing that I can do in this position. Um, and thankfully, my opponent uh, maybe wasn't attentive enough to notice it. And he plays his normal move, rook A to, rook a to B8. Oh. Uh, yeah, my question is, what would you play in this position? And uh, do you think you can see any saving idea here as white? Interesting. Well, uh, there's, of course, the absolute beauty. If you can ever get the knight to f6, this would be fabulous. Ah, there are some tricks. Oh, this is amazing. I think I see it. Yeah. Is it the knight, to, you... is it the knight to e4? It is knight to e4. Look at that. Yeah. So the reason why I could not have played it right away with the king on g1 um was because there's a check on exactly a discovered check right there queen goes to d uh, yeah, c, a c5. c5 yeah right oh. yeah so not that king h1 is great but uh it's part of this idea which i think honestly is the only idea that i have in this position there is nothing else that i even could do and uh yeah so i play knight e4 and uh but my one of my favorite things about swindling is seeing your opponent's reactions. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Oh, this is yeah. This is probably everything you're you're thinking of is just like falling apart. Yeah. So did you're he right. so did he make 90... a grunt or did he shout or did he stand up? What happened? <laughs> No, he, he thought for a very, very long time. He like he couldn't believe his eyes, I think. He was just <laughs> he was just very, very surprised for the first few moments mm -hmm. because he just couldn't believe that this was real, that, that I actually played this move. That's amazing. But yeah, it's something that can easily slip your mind because you just think E4 is protected and yep. there's no way that the knight is going there. Um, but yeah, when you're in a very hopeless position kind of you start to see these <laughs> unusual ideas and uh, here i was uh, lucky that it worked so the reason why knight e4 is uh, works is because now after the f file opens up there is an idea of bringing the rook to f8 and uh, after the rook takes pawn takes promotes to a queen so then wait okay i'll show so yeah you, you can we, just show example, it yeah Rook f8 check, black is forced to take, then we promote to a queen, rook takes, and queen to g7 with a checkmate. So Boom. this is the idea behind opening up the f uh, the f file, and um, and the reason why it's so effective is because um, is because the we're opening it up with a tempo. So the pawn on e4 is attacking the queen, so there's nothing that the queen can actually do. Um, to prevent this from happening, even if it defends the f8 square, that still doesn't defend the yep. g, uh, the g square. Um, yeah, and if the queen goes to, for example, I don't know, e5, we can actually. I'm wondering. I think we can just take the queen and then play this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this absolutely. Is, That's already what we're doing, and then promoting with 
for the checkmate. So there's two checkmate ideas here. So nothing else is really working. So actually, it was best to just play rook e4 at this point mm -hmm. and um, go for a position like that. It's um, black is still uh, black, black just gave back the exchange that uh, that was extra, and this would probably um, still be not not winning for white just yet but i think there's some good chance. ideas that i could still that i could still go for some chances but definitely not winning for black anymore as clearly as uh, as it used to be so yeah knight uh, knight e4 is uh, is the only move and uh, i was very surprised to to actually see it work i've been preparing knight e4 actually since probably for a while even yeah. Like, yeah. After I played, uh, um, even before I played Bishop H6, because it's it's the only thing that I have, right? It's uh, um, that's where, like you said, if the knight could come mm. to to F6, that would be amazing. So knight E4 actually turns the game around because F6 E4 is not that accurate, and um, there's basically no matter where the queen is coming, it's it's not working. Mm. So the queen went to f7 yeah i thought so this might have been the only yeah so this is what he played and already at this point i'm pretty sure he was probably really mad at uh, at his position because it's right it's completely winning you can do anything for yeah. example in the beginning position you can just do anything other than allow that idea for example queen d6 just to not have that idea anymore and the reason why this isn't working is well, queen goes back to e7 maybe or gives it right, no, the queen yeah. the queen can go to e7 sure i'm not sure if it works here specifically but uh, there's definitely there's definitely something here if what if black ever wants to he can just always block somewhere or something sure something yeah. as a last uh, as a last resort yeah but some of these aren't even a threat anymore right because rook uh, Rook f8 uh, is sometimes not that much of a threat if uh, you can capture back with. with I the mean, queen. yeah, I think you get a queen, yeah. Right? Um, can you play d2? d2, and then if this happens, we take and yeah, we this... take back with the queen yeah. so that there is no checkmate. And. Uh, well, he has to react and uh, play the rook mm -hmm. to f8. And then we f8. take. I think and this should there's... be winning. Because of the back rank. Yeah. This has to be winning because of the back rank. Something, I don't know, something like that. Oh. Because otherwise the pawn is going to can't the king going to promote in a few moves. Can't the king bishop just a4. go to g1 again? Yeah, but then bishop a4 or bishop g4, which one? Oh, dear. Oh, even, even bishop b5, it's oh, saying, no. actually is even nicer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a great swindle. That yeah, so that was. I was thinking bishop a4 or bishop g4. Maybe it's not working, or maybe this is just straight up winning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so queen d6 would be the saving, uh, not the saving move, but just it's completely winning it's, because knight e4 isn't working. Yeah, but it is just like so complicated. It's uh, really I love uh, knight e4. Um, let's, uh, uh, can, can you, um, unshare the screen? I want to ask you one question about this position. Um, okay. Well, you actually didn't even, uh, see the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Please show, show the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't, I'm not Pardon. winning this just yet. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was already, that was already the end here. So no, no, it's not the end after queen f7 because, uh, I take king takes and, um, queen f1 check. That's what I did, and um, oh. it actually misses the win. Oh no! So I no. could have won here. <gasps> Try to guess how. It's 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 oh. a bit it's a bit complicated, but uh, you already know it's not queen f one. So what happens if it's uh, queening g eight check? It is queening with what idea though? Now queen can go to f one. Right. And what was the purpose of making that? Uh, because now you, yeah, you save the back rank of uh, either or, um, I think. The back rank was safe regardless. Oh, yeah, you're right. 
So but, but the, the reason rook is it, not on, yeah. Yeah, the reason is you separated rooks. And that was the whole idea behind it is that now the rooks aren't coordinated and the queen and the bishop can create uh, can create a better attack when the rooks are here as opposed to what happened in the game. Uh, in the game, I didn't play that. I played queen f1 and took it. So now, even though I did keep the g7 pawn, which is what I prioritized, I wanted to keep the g7 pawn. Um, but now actually, this is some sort of a fortress um, as opposed to um, if I play this, the rooks are uncoordinated and the computer says this is winning, which I think um, it was hard for me to evaluate it because there's no immediate win. You just slowly play something like h4 H yeah, yeah. Like bring the queen in try to win the pawn maybe create some threats it's really slow but i uh, you can't understand why it's winning here because the the whole there's a big difference between the rooks being coordinated and the rooks being uh, being apart because you always have some um double attack ideas and it's just uh, that's the way to play with the queen against the two rooks is you want the rooks to be uncoordinated but yeah this was hard for me to evaluate maybe mm, to someone uh, more experienced it would be you could immediately know that this is what you should do um but yeah i went for the pawn instead and kept the one on g7 but turns out that this is actually not winning <sighs> because uh white black's pieces are just all defending each other and i have no way to break through i can't ever bring the king in it doesn't really help i can't promote any of my pawns you can't so, break it up no yeah yeah so this is basically uh, yeah so this basically has to be a draw i don't think there is uh yeah and if you if it. you get the queen to f8 and exchange it with the rooks it's, you have you don't really achieve anything no here exactly because i will lose the bishop oh yeah that's uh, another fact which is very difficult yeah without the bishop <laughs> yeah yes so it's uh, yeah the, without the bishop would be a bit more difficult to play um so yeah this was uh, the game yeah you want me to unshare this yeah thing? absolutely beautiful example i just want to get uh, back to to um this swindle situation. So you have something in mind, which you had clearly a couple of moves ago. And I, I remember I had those kind of positions too, where I had something in mind and I'm like, oh gosh, hopefully this happens. And I mm -hmm. actually had a, a um, I had a complete rook and a minor piece less, and I still kept playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was one of my earlier days, but I saw one super ugly cheeky mate motive where i could uh, checkmate my opponent when he takes another piece which he just took and then i checkmated him with a knight which was just uh, oh, wow. pretty fantastic because yeah the king couldn't move <laughs> away <laughs> because mm -hmm. there was a line blocked from my rook so i said mm -hmm. checkmate and that was it and um i just wanted to ask you you're preparing for this and then the move uh Rook to b8 is coming from your opponent. Mm -hmm. And what what is going through your head when you're like, is this something? I couldn't, I couldn't believe that it was actually working. <laughs> because I already uh, accepted the, the loss, accepted the, the fate. Fact, I'm, I'm down in exchange against the Grandmaster. It's like Time to give nothing. the elbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah but it was, game. yeah, that was, uh, I was really happy to see Rook. Uh, Rook B8, and um, but yeah, it's. Um, did you play? That's... Did you play the knight immediately, or no, did you thought, wait for a moment? It. Yeah, you yeah. you thought about it still. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's... Yes, that's the one important lesson that I always um, emphasize to my students is, uh, especially children who often get upset after losing a pawn or losing a piece in their game, that it is never, and, and never resign too early. Mm. Um, the worst that can happen is um, that you try your best and you lose anyway. But from that, the result doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And you just uh, get some extra practice, maybe maybe extra practice in defense. Um, and at least you you gave it you gave it your best. So once once in a while, if you do keep trying, you will get a chance to 
uh, for a beautiful save like that. And that's mm. what makes it worth it. It's, uh, of course, if it's when, when you see grandmasters playing against each other, you see them resigning immediately after they lose a piece or something like that. But that's because it's already a matter of respect for them. It's uh, because they trust each other to win that position. But it is yes. for most of us, it's not uh, it's not like that. And I think it's worth it to play. It's worth it to keep playing. Uh, even even I was playing here down in exchange and uh, you can you never know. There are miracles that uh, make it work out. Yeah, it's sometimes it's a lot disrespecting is when you have the when you're playing golf and the hole is there and the ball is here and then you go like, listen, you're a good golf player. Just uh, that's it. That's your point. You're like that. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this giving up and never giving up. It's uh, yeah, don't give up too early is I think it's a very correct way to to say it, because if you never give up, this is I, I personally don't believe it's helpful. Although a lot of people say like, never give up, never give up, whatever happens, never give up. Nah, that no, you should give up at one point. It's it's actually benefiting you if you give up in certain positions, then you just, uh, yeah, force yourself and all the others uh, to to have the whole game. But yeah, never give up too early is good. If there's still life in the position, if there's still pieces on the board, yeah. anything, anything is possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the right thing is just to complicate the position as much as you can. Try to be as annoying as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah when you're better you want to simplify and when you're worse you want to complicate it yes and um, even if you don't like tactics i mean trust me a tactical mess is the last thing that your opponent wants when he's in a completely winning position so you just need to go for it anyway and be as active as possible um yeah so well being objective is um is essential to win a chess but mm -hmm. remember that chess is also a highly psychological game and your opponents are not machines they also make mistakes and get nervous and uh, well they mess up winning positions because it's what we all do it happens to everyone so yeah my advice is just to try to find counterplay in lost positions as much as you can and look for unconventional ideas because uh, you never know it might bring you a very nice save Lovely. And with these words, we end uh, our episode of Svitlana's Smart Moves for today. And um, we see each other next week again. Looking forward to that. So have a lovely week, everybody. Bye-bye.